Hiya, if you're watching this video, then you've elected to take English language and literature for A-level, or you're contemplating taking English language and literature for A-level. So the point of this um, video, I'm just going to run you through the PowerPoint that we've given you for the induction, just to talk you through the expectations for the course, what the course is going to look like, um, so that you know what you're signing up for, um, and also what we expect you to try and get completed between now and September so that you're prepared um, when we actually start teaching the course when you join Year 12. Okay, so first of all, um, part of your pack for induction will be some joining instructions. Um, those joining instructions give you a list of the texts that you're going to be studying for English language and literature and you might want to think about purchasing them um, as soon as possible so that you can get ahead with reading. Okay, If you're not sure about um, what grade you're going to get when you get your final grades in, in August, then you might want to wait um, before you actually purchase the text. But obviously, if you want to give yourself a head start, or if you're pretty confident that you're going to get the, the joining requirements anyway, which, reminder, was, was two grade fives um, for English, then you, you might want to buy them ahead of time and, and get reading, okay? So we study the texts that are on that list, and you can read it at your own leisure, but the texts for English language literature that are on that list are Othello by William Shakespeare, um, The Great Gatsby by S. Scott Fitzgerald, and also A Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams. There's also an anthology um, of non-fiction texts, but we'll give you a copy of that anthology in September, okay? Just as a heads up as well, we follow the Pearson Edexcel specification, which means if you ever want to look at the specification or have a look at past papers and those sorts of things, then you'll want to go on the Edexcel website to find the stuff for the relevant course that we're actually studying. Okay, so just to run you through the course nice and briefly then, the course for English Language and Literature is made up of three main components. Okay, component one is called Voices in Speech and Writing. Okay, and that accounts for 40% of the total marks for the English Language and Literature course. Okay, that's split into two sections, so you'll answer two questions in this particular exam. Okay, one is on the anthology texts from the 20th and 21st century, so you'll look at two of the texts from the anthology, and, um, or actually in the, um, in the A-level, you'll look at one text in the anthology and you'll compare it with a text that you won't have seen before. But obviously, a large part of what you'll do will be to study anthology texts. And for section B, you'll take an extract from a streetcar named Desire and use it to answer a larger question. Okay. The second component, component two, is also worth 40%, and that's called varieties in language and literature. Okay. We look particularly at a section called... Um, society and the individual, and that's broken down into two sections as well. Okay, so one, you'll be given an unseen non fiction text, so a text that you've never seen before, and you'll be asked a question about it, and the other section is where you'll compare um, two pre studied texts, The Great Gatsby and Othello, and that will be based on a particular question as well. Okay, finally, component three, which is the coursework, is worth the final 20% of the course. And that will ask you to create your own portfolio of your own pieces of creative writing. One will be fiction, one will be non-fiction, and you'll also be asked to write an analytical commentary of each, where you will essentially be evaluating your written choices. Okay, so let's just break that down a little bit more, if you wanted a little bit more detail. Component 1 also goes by the name 9ELO01, um, and that accounts for 40% of that course. It's a two hour and 30 minute exam, and it's evenly split across section A and section B. Okay, it's a 50 mark paper. There's 25 marks available for section A and 25 marks for section B. Okay, so for section A, you'll be asked to write a comparative essay where you'll use one of the anthology texts that you'll have been studying for two years, and you'll compare that with an unseen text that you won't have seen before. Okay. So if you think about what you've done at GCSE with your poetry, where you're asked to write comparatively, it's similar to that, except that with the poetry, obviously, you've done, you compare two poems that you've studied before. With this, you'll be comparing a text that you've studied before with a text that you haven't. OK, and with section B, your drama text, you'll have read A Streetcar Named Desire and studied it in lots of depth. 
you'll be given an extract from it and then you'll be given an, an essay question that you can start from the extract with but you'll also want to branch out and look at other parts of the text as well okay section two or component two and um, varieties in language and literature which is goes by the code 9EL002 is also worth 40 percent and that's another two hour and 30 minute exam okay it's not quite an even split with this one okay because there's 20 marks available for section A and 30 for section B so section A is an unseen analysis where essentially you'll just be given one unseen text from a non-fiction um, category and you'll be asked to write an analysis of that text in response to a question okay now we're using the theme of society and the individual so the text will be broadly linked to the theme of society and the individual and the question will be broadly linked to that theme as well that's worth 20 marks section b is worth more marks that's the more heavily weighted one for this um, component which is where you write a comparative essay using two texts that you have studied in lots and lots of detail othello and the great gatsby and you'll write a comparative essay um, and it's again going to be based on that theme of society and the individual. Okay, there were other themes as well, but we've elected to go with this particular theme. Okay, you might have noticed from having a look at these slides, and these just come from the specification, which you can have a look at at your leisure, is that they're open book. Okay, both component one and component two are open book, which means you can take clean copies of the text into the exam. Okay, so you'll have a clean copy of Othello, you'll have a clean copy of The Great Gatsby in the exam with you. Okay, That makes it quite different to GCSE, which is closed book for literature, um, where you don't get to take the actual texts in. So in some ways it's more straightforward because you're not going to be um, forced to memorise quotations. You'll actually have the texts with you in case you need to look anything up. Okay, And last but not least then, the coursework which is really quite exciting because you get to do your own creative writing based on your own stimulus texts. It's worth 20% of the course and it goes by the code 9EL003. Essentially, it's a 3,000 word portfolio, okay? And you will write a 1,000 word piece of creative fiction writing, a 1,000 word piece of creative non-fiction writing, and a 1,000 word commentary where you reflect on the text that you wrote and sort of evaluate the, the decision-making process that you went through. Okay, That's worth 60 marks, so 36 marks available for the actual pieces of writing you do, that's 18 marks each, and 24 marks for the commentary overall. Okay, And that's worth 20%. Now we generally don't start the coursework until towards the end of year 12, but obviously the more widely you read, that's going to really help you in terms of making sure that you're able to engage and write creatively and with your own ideas okay now normally if we were doing this induction session in school we would use it to give you a taster of the sort of skills you would be using um, in the course to see whether or not it's something that you engage with and something that you enjoy okay and obviously normally you'd be able to bounce your ideas off your teacher or off your peers in that session now we're not doing it like that this year for obvious reasons but I'm just gonna include as part of the PowerPoint um, what I would have delivered to or what the teacher who would have take, taken the session would have delivered to you anyway for you to use. Okay, And that's going to involve a text called The Telltale Heart um, by Edgar Allan Poe. And there's some questions about how Poe, as a writer, creates a sense of voice in his work. Okay, And thinking about how a writer creates a sense of voice in a fiction piece, which this is, or in non-fiction pieces, is always going to be a really important factor, particularly in component one of the course, which is all about the creation of voices in writing. Okay, So you might want to go through this PowerPoint at your own pace and use it to analyse this text and think about it and do some, um, some, uh, some close analysis and make some notes. You don't have to, but obviously it's a good way of giving yourself a taster of the type of thing we'll be doing um, on a day-to-day -day basis in class. Um, when you actually join the course in September. Okay, so what can you do before September? Okay, well, first of all, obviously, there was that joining instruction document. You'll want to have a read of that and either order the text or wait until your result comes in and get the text sorted after that. Okay, there's also included as part of your induction pack um, a list of summer reading tasks. Okay, so 
here's your set of reading tasks for Langlit. And these are compulsory tasks. We do require you to do these because they show that you're committed to the course and they're also going to be a really important lead in to what we start to study right from the beginning of year 12. Okay, so there's two summer tasks we want you to do for this course. Number one is a linguistic glossary. Okay, there's a big long list of linguistic terms here. Okay, what I want you to do is to create a glossary by looking them all up, provide definitions, and provide some worked examples of each of those terms in use. Okay, your examples of them, they can come from existing text. So you might find that a lot of these terms you can apply to some of the texts you studied at GCSE or some of the things you did at English language at GCSE. If you can't do that, then you can create your own examples. Okay. In terms of how you want to present this, it's completely up to you. Students in the past have done a three column table where you have the term on the left, a definition in the middle, and then a worked example on the right. But it's completely up to you. Okay. That's going to come in really handy from September when we start to look at the voices anthology because you're going to be using a lot of these terminology um, words and phrases. And if you've got a good handle on what they mean already, then you're going to be at an advantage. Okay. The second summer task is a research project. And what we want you to research is the Roaring Twenties in America. Okay. There's some subtopics that we want you to have a look at. Look at. So what led to the Roaring Twenties? What were the key features of life in 1920s America? What was the status of women, social classes, and ethnic minorities in the Roaring Twenties? What do we mean by the Jazz Age? What about this term social decadence and excess? And how did the Roaring Twenties foreshadow economic disaster that happened with the Wall Street crash in 1929? Okay, the reason why we want you to do that is because The Great Gatsby, one of the texts that you're going to be studying, you're going to be starting in September, and knowing a lot about the Roaring Twenties and the Jazz Age is going to make you at an advantage there. Okay, in terms of what format we want this research project to take, it's up to you. Okay, it's a little bit more flexible with a research project. You might want to create a document. You might want to create a PowerPoint. You might want to make yourself a series of videos and be really creative with it. You might just want to do some handwritten notes. It's completely up to you. Okay. However, as I said, these um, tasks are compulsory because they're going to feed into what you start to do in September. Okay. After the induction session on the 22nd of June, we're also going to send you to your email addresses a link to to join a Google Classroom for English Language and Literature. Okay, so please, once you receive that email, click the link, join the classroom, and then you'll be able to access some more materials that we'll post on there. And also, once we receive any more updates about what things are going to look like in September for the course, we will update you on there. Okay, if you have any questions about anything, either from this video or from any of the reading that you do in the joining instructions or the summer tasks or whatever it might be, please feel free to email me. My email address is there. I'm the head of Key Stage 5 English, so it's my job to obviously um, help you out with any queries or questions you might have. Um, don't be afraid to, to um, drop an email to me if you're not sure about something. It's better to, to ask um, than to suffer in silence. Okay, so please do that if you're not sure about anything. And we really look forward to seeing you in September. Um, hopefully you enjoy the rest of um, this summer as much as it's possible to do so. Um, look forward to your results. Um, I'm sure you'll get the results that you deserve and we look forward to seeing you all in September. Okay, take care everybody. Bye-bye.